Kwam. Dominus Fabiscum Exaudinus Dominus Sancte Pater Omnipotens Eterne Deus Et mitere digneris Sanctum Angelum Tum De Celis Qui custodiat, coveat, protegat, visitat, atque defendat Omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo Per Christum Dominum Nostrum
Ich habe mich nicht mehr weil ich das Begriff aus Sandl habe mein Intro in Brot an der Rede. Ich habe mich nicht mehr gewusst, ich habe mich nicht mehr gewusst, aber ich habe mich nicht mehr gewusst, 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 ich habe mich nicht mehr gewusst,
Gloria in hell shall cease and Omnipotent and pitane Deus, fac nosti bis semper et devotam cerere voluntatem, et majestati tue sincero corde servire. Per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum et filium tuum, qui te cum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula secula opum. Lexio Epistole Beati Petri Apostoli. Carissimi, esto de prudentes et vigilate in oraciónibus. Onte omniatem mutuam in vobis metipsis caritatem continuam abentes, cuya caritas operit multitudinem peccatorum. Hospitales in vicem sine murmuracione, unus quis que sicut accepit graciam in alterutum illam administrantes, sicut boni dispensatores mutiformis en gracie dei. 
Si quis loquitu quasi sem hones dei. Si quis ministrata tam quam ex virtute, quad administrata Deus. Ut in omnibus honore vegetun Deus, per Jesum Christum Dominum nostrum. Alléluia, Alléluia, Rina Vida, Dominus, Père de Gente, Deus et Deus, Père de Santa Mussoura, Alléluia, Manvos, René, Manvos, Alléluia, Manvos, Alléluia, 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 Alléluia,
Dominus Vabis Cum. Sequencia Sancti Evangelii, Secundum Ioannem. In il vo tempore, dit Gesù discepoli suis, come venerit paracletus, preme gomitam vobis a patre, spiritum veritatis, cui a patre procedit, il le testimonium peribebit de me. Et vos testimonium peribebitis, cui a ab initio mecum estis. Hec alocutusum vobis, ut non scandalit zemini. Absque synagogis faciente vos, sed venitora ut omniscu interficit vos, arbitretur obsequium se prestare Deo. Et henke facient vobis, qui en non noverunt patrem neque me. Sed red locutusum vobis, ut cum veneritora eorum reminis camini, qui a ego dixi vobis. Reading from the Epistle of Saint Paul, Saint Peter, the Apostle, for the Sunday after the Ascension. Dearly beloved, be prudent and watch in prayers. But before all things, have a constant mutual charity among yourselves, for charity covereth a multitude of sins. Using hospitality one towards another without murmuring, as every man hath received grace, ministering the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the words of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the power which God administereth. That is, that in all things God may be honored through Jesus Christ our Lord. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, when the paraclete cometh, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceedeth from the Father, he shall give testimony of me. And you shall give testimony, because you are with me from the beginning. These are things I have spoken to you, that you may not be scandalized. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the hour cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doth a service to God. And these things will they do to you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the hour shall come, you shall remember that I told you of them. The announces of the week. Tomorrow there are only two Masses, 7 and 11.25 a.m. Because Father Pacosta is in Auckland to give them an additional Mass. On Tuesday, three Masses, 6, 7, and 11, 25 a.m., Feast of St. Francis Caracciolo, Confessor. On Wednesday, two Masses, 7 a.m. and 11, 25 a.m., Feast of St. Boniface, Bishop and Martyr, Apostle of Germany. On this Thursday, 6th of June, St. Norbert, Feast, no, two Masses, 7 a.m. and 6 p.m., with all day adoration. You are all encouraged to come. On Friday, which is the first Friday of the month, three Masses, 7 a.m., 11 to 05, a school Mass, 
and the 6 p.m. mass and exposition with all night adoration. You are strongly encouraged to spend some time with our Lord. Uh, could you not watch one hour with me? Spend some time with our Lord in this, especially the youth in the, um, the young adults in the middle of the night. That's very important. And next Saturday, Vigil of Pentecost, one Mass at 8 a.m. And just a Vigil of Pentecost is traditionally a day of fast and abstinence. So for the mothers, um, it's not an obligation on the moral sin, but it is still uh, the tradition, so you are all encouraged to follow the age of tradition for your sanctification. the usual um, meetings and uh, activities of the week. Just um, in two weeks' time, we have the procession of St. Anthony on the 16th, with the visit of the district superior who will preside that procession. So if you want to have any meeting with him, you can uh, make an appointment um, with, the, um, with the school secretary, this is Angela. There will be some promotion to the, of the Eucharistic Crusade on Corpus Christi. Mark the time at 4.30 p.m. And promotion for St. Stephen's Arch Confraternity on the Feast of St. Peter and Paul, Saturday, 29th of June. Also donations for the band for the St. Anthony's procession would be most welcome. The, um, also the some mothers are starting a school playground fundraising to improve our school playground. So please mark that. And we have started the bankathon. So if you all support this uh, very important um, school fundraising, our school's life depends on it. So please be um, generous for that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today I'd like to speak to you about the fourth commandment. It may not be directly related with the, the gospel, but it's an important commandment of God. It is the very first commandment with regards to our neighbor. It is even before the commandment, thou shalt not kill. It seems that an offense to, to parents may not be as, as grievous as not to kill, but in fact, God puts the fourth commandment even before the fifth commandment, because the parents are those who transmit life to us that are the very origin of our own life. And the fourth commandment is the very foundation of the whole Catholic civilization. And civilization that is a set of treasures, treasures of wisdom, of good laws, of arts, of accomplishments that is passed from generation to generations and make their greatness. For instance, the Greek Roman civilization was based on the philosophy, that is the love of wisdom, and natural law and uh, encompassed um, many um, like the virtues of discipline and especially the principle of law and order and they, it led to great accomplishment and manifest in some of the buildings of roads and especially the Pax Romana for about 200 years plus there was peace in the Rome, whole of the Roman Empire on the borders, there were defense of the borders, but during the, in the Roman Empire there was a wonderful peace and that was, uh, that, uh, that was quite providential for the fast diffusion of the gospel. Within less than a hundred years, the gospel had been preached basically all over the Roman Empire and even beyond. Since grace does not destroy nature, but rather heals and elevates, the Catholic civilization, which was built about the time of the fall of Rome, took the best elements of the Roman civilization, especially all what concerns the natural law and natural philosophy. For instance, the Code of Justinian remains the present model day, and even in the present day, a model and great inspiration for many codes of law. These treasures, purified and elevated by the divinely revealed truth and by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that became the very foundation of the Catholic civilization. 
which is not only visible in the many wonderful saints that it produced, but also in the great achievements such as the cathedrals. Now, the essential elements of a civilization is the ability to transmit these treasured values that make it great. And decadence sets in when a civilization is no longer capable to transmit these treasures. This shows the very important place of education in a culture. These values are passed on by education, which starts in the family and is completed in schools and universities. At the time of St. Thomas Aquinas, when universities were led by great saints and doctors of the church, such as St. Thomas or St. Bonaventure, St. Albert the Great, it was the peak of Christendom. But when the people is no longer capable to pass on those treasures from generation to the next generation, then it is the onset of decadence. And thus, the outside pressure of the lawless barbarians and the inside selfishness and moral decay of the Roman pagans caused the decadence and the fall of Rome. The only thing that remained standing at that time were the many holy bishops, and they gave, that gave them the opportunity to set the foundations of the Catholic civilization, which lasted for about a thousand years. The beginning of the decay started with the Renaissance, that is like a reverse of paganism, when the primacy of the spiritual was lost by many upper class who were more intent on material wealth and pleasures. And then Protestantism attacked its very root, the root of, the, of Christendom, by rejecting the Church, which is the pillar and ground of the truth. If you shake the pillar, then the whole edifice falls. And then that led to the false philosophies of the 18th century, which rejected the very revelation itself. And that led further to the French Revolution, which rejected God and put man in place of God. And these are the, the rights of man, and so on and so on. Uh, God is no longer the foundation of law, but just the will of the people. And that, that is the destruction of all laws, because the will of the people, it becomes the will of the stronger. And that is the law of the jungle. But all through these trials, the church was keeping the light shining and burning. And the drama of the past 60 years is that churchmen themselves have followed the world instead of Christ and are no longer passing on these treasures of divine revelation. The treasures of the faith of all times, the treasures of the morals and the laws of the church, the treasures of the traditional liturgy, the treasures of the wisdom and philosophy and theology of the fathers and doctors of the church. If the men of the church themselves are not no longer passing on these treasures, who will transmit them? And thus the ultimate decadence sets in, and which we can see today, where even the most evident natural truths are despised and the most unnatural vices are approved and even claimed as a right. Modern generations think that they are better than their fathers simply because they possess more advanced material gadgets, and they are blind to their own spiritual blindness and emptiness. The law of life is the ability to transmit life that one has received. That is true for civilizations too. Now we want to make the Catholic civilization live and therefore we must make all efforts to transmit these values. Of course, before one can transmit these treasures, one must first receive them, learn them, cherish them, and then one may pass them on to the next generation. And you do so by educating your children, in the Catholic faith and culture. Faith is not sufficient, you need also the culture, because if the very natural truths are undermined, then faith loses its very foundation. See, if one does not believe that there is any truth, if anybody can make up his own truth, then uh, there is no room for faith. So you understand very well the importance of the work of Archbishop Lefebvre in founding good seminaries that would transmit the Church's doctrine in its purity and integrity without alteration and without diminution. You understand the importance of good Catholic schools that transmit these treasures to your children. And you, my dear children, do appreciate these treasures that you receive and be eager to learn them, to assimilate them, to appropriate them and to cherish them which what you receive so that in your turn you will be able to transmit them to the next generation. The modern world claims that all men are born equal. 
And the truth is that all men are born babies. <laughs> Little babies not equal with their parents. Babies who are in complete dependence on their parents. Little babies who know nothing and have everything to learn. Who are unable to do anything by themselves and completely depend on their parents. Yet little babies that will receive so much from their parents that they are debtors. We are all debtors of our parents, of our forebearers, of our countries, and especially of our fathers in the faith. We have received so much that we shall never be able to repay our parents and those who have given us that education as much as we receive from them. And that is notion of indebtedness, is the foundation of filial piety that is the fourth commandment. We need to honor, to honor our parents Precisely because we are debtors to them. We owe them so much, we need to honor them because of that debt that we receive from them. So far from being born with rights, we are born with duties, with a debt, you know, that we have to repay. And, the f and that first duty is that of honoring our parents. This is how we can repay them, at least partially, the debt that we owe to them. St. Thomas Aquinas explains that to honor someone means to give testimony to the excellence of that person. The supreme honor is due to God alone and acknowledges his supreme excellence. The supreme honor is called worship and that is the object of the first three commandments. But the fourth commandment bids us also to give a relative honor to our parents. And because of that relative excellence which they have with regard to us that they are at the origin of what we have, at least they transmitted it. They are at the origin of so much, they are not the first cause but the immediate cause of so much that we have received. To honor them means to give testimony to this excellence of theirs. And such testimony pre-requires a recognition of the excellence of what we have received, an appreciation of the treasures we received. We must appreciate the value of that perennial philosophy, the philosophy of all times, that is the natural wisdom, this fundamental truth that gives light to all domains of knowledge. We must appreciate the value of the natural law and its necessity in order to build true peace, that is tranquility of real order, not just subjective you know, um, agreement, but built on nature, on the human nature. Above all, we must appreciate the supernatural values of the true faith, of the Catholic doctrine and of Catholic morals, without which there is no salvation, no true happiness, even on earth. And since we cannot repay our parents, we honor them by passing on to the next generation the treasures that we have received from them. That's the best way to honor them, because we appreciate what we have received from them. As you can see, honoring our parents then becomes the very heart of the transmission of the Catholic civilization. When new generations have lost the esteem for the values they have received, they will not care to transmit them. And we can see this all around us today. Selfishness reigns. Modern man lives for himself. He does not care to transmit what he, have with, what he no longer believes in. Modern man does not even want to have children to which he can transmit something. And they kill the offspring by abortion. This is the ultimate death of a civilization, and it ends up in hell. Thus, honoring our parents belong to the natural law and can be seen even in non-Catholic civilizations, such as the Chinese civilization. But it takes a much higher value in the light of the true faith. Indeed, we see by the faith beyond our parents up to God. God is the first giver, the first cause of all good, the author of life. Our parents are transmitters of this life. They transmit this gift of God to us, but God is a source. Seeing the divine origin of all these goods makes us appreciate even more the value of the good education we, we received, and thus enables us to transmit it better. And thus good children obey God in obeying their parents. They see that the authority of their parents is a God-given authority. They obey God when they obey their parents and those who participate in the parental authority, such as the teachers. And it elevates the virtue of obedience and multiplies its fruits. The virtue of obedience is the mother of all virtues. It is very important to note that material riches and spiritual riches do not pass from generation to generation in the same way. 
But even with cheese, it is sufficient to take them, and that's it, in order to possess them. But spiritual riches, it is necessary to learn them, and that is more difficult. It's easy to take, it's more difficult to learn. One does not understand the value at first. Children have a hard time to learn in school. But only after one possesses them fully, then one starts to understand the value of them. And there is therefore need of trust. Trusting that your parents give us their best. And that our parents give us some real spiritual treasures. And children will get this trust when they see their own parents revere these truths and hold them in high esteem. If the parents do not appreciate the schooling given to their children, their own children will not make effort to learn and therefore they won't get it. In the modern world, people think that there are so many changes that it is useless to learn today's science because tomorrow it will have advanced so much that today's science will be past. And therefore, modern education concludes that one needs to, not to learn something, but rather to learn learning. It's a thing you find often in modern educa education. And there is an evident flaw in this, that one cannot learn learning unless one first learns something. If you have not ever, ever learned anything, how can you reflect on your own learning? It's impossible. But there is even a more important and great deception in such false reasoning and that is to miss the eternal truth. This is the and the first one of this eternal truth is the very ability of humans to learn. That is, the very unchanging nature of their own intelligence. Modern man no longer knows what his intelligence is, because modern man is materialist and does not believe in the spiritual nature of his own intelligence. These eternal truths are the foundation and the core of the Christian wisdom and will always be necessary even for the future generations till the end of the world. That is true for natural truth, like the laws of physics, gravity, chemistry and life, they do not change. We discover them today, but they were already true yesterday and even since the beginning of time and will remain true tomorrow until the end of times. Eternal truth about our own selves, that we are creatures of God, made by Him and for Him, with a body and an intellectual soul, with an eternal destiny, with an absolute and marvelous happiness in heaven if we are faithful, and with the danger of hell if we are not faithful. These eternal truths have not changed and will never change. And the knowledge of them is a treasure. And the more we seek deeper understanding of these eternal truths, the wiser we become. All these, and above all these natural truths, there is of course the eternal truth of faith, the truth and the truth about God. Saint Augustine, reading Cicero as a youth in his teens, fell in love with the truth and had, by the grace of God, great longing to know the truth, great longings for wisdom. And he finally found it by, the, by listening to St. Ambrose, that is, by listening to the Church. He then first learned avidly this eternal truth, which he would later teach so beautifully. So we clearly see that to appreciate what we have received from our parents and teachers, to honor them for passing such treasure to us, to obey them in order to do better, uh, in order to better receive such treasure and to pass on to the next generation these treasures of truth, wisdom, virtues and holy living which we receive from our parents. All this belongs to the fourth commandment and it is at the heart of a true civilization that is of Christendom. It is also the very essence of tradition, true living tradition not changing. Mutants are barren. May the model of all mothers, that is Blessed Virgin Mary, who herself was the perfect heir of the faith of the fathers of the holy people, that is the faith of Abraham, the piety of David, the wisdom of Solomon, etc., may she obtain for us to, fu to fully appreciate those treasures of Catholic tradition which we have received from our parents and pass them on faithfully to the next generation for the glory of God and the salvation of many souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Credo in unum Deum. Patrimonio di Padre
Omnia secula secula Dominus vahobis cum Et usiritus tu Sum corda Sanghamus Domino Deo Nostro Vered ignum et justum est Ecum et salutare Nos libis semper et ubique Gracia sagere Domine Sancte, Pater Omnipotens, Eterne Deus, per Christum Dominum Nostrum. Qui post resurrectionem suam omnibus discipulis manifestus apparuit, et ipsis eschernentibus est elevatus in celum, ut nos divinitatis sue tribuere tesse participes. Et ideo cum angelis et archangelis, cum tronis et dominatiionibus, cum quae omnimilisia celestis exercitus, cum numen gloriae tue canimus, sine fine dicentes. Sanctum, 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 Sanctum
No bis koko ete katori bos. Per omnia secula seculorum. Oremus preceptis salutaribus moniti, et divina institution reformati, audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in celis, sanctifice tu, un homen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis rodie, et dimite nobis debita nobis, nostra, sicut et nos dimittimus et debitoribus nostris, et nen hos inducas in tentacionem. Per omnia secula seculorum. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Etum spiritu sum. Agnus Dei, questo è l'ispicata mondi misere. Agnus Dei.
Miseria to vestri omnipotens Deus, et et imisis pegatis vestris, perducat vos ad vitam eternam. Indulgentiam absolutionem et remissionem pegatorum vestrorum, trebat vobis omnipotens et misericors dominos. Ecce agnus dei, ecce cutodit pegata mundi, domine non sum digno, sut in tre subtectum meum, set tantum dig verbo sanabitur anima mea, domine non sum digno, sut in tre subtectum meum, set tantum dig verbo sanabitur anima mea, domine non sum digno, sut in tre subtectum meum, set tantum dig verbo sanabitur anima mea. Corpus de mestri Jesu Christi, grand vin vitam ternam, Amen. Corpus de mestri Jesu Christi, grand vin vitam ternam, Amen. Orbus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du in wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesus Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen. Corpus de Mestre Jesu Christi, und du wieder in deinem Namen. Amen.
Dominus Vahobis cum Et cum sire tutu Oremus Repletis Domine Muneribus Satris Da quesumus Ut in cassiarum semper actione maneamus Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tuum Qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus Per omnia secula secula Amen Dominus Vahobis cum Et cum Spiritu Tu Ite Misa Est Benedicat vos omnipotens et Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus, Dominus Vabiscum, Initium Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem, In principio erat verbum et verbum erat apud Deum et Deus erat verbum, hoc erat in principio apud Deum, omnia per ipsum a facta sunt et sin ipso factum est dicere quod a factum est. In ipso vita erat et vita erat lux ominum et lux in tenebris lucet et et tenebri eiam non comprehenderunt. Fuitum omissus a Deo cui in amen erat Ioannes, hic venit in testimonium ut testimonium per eberet delumine ut omnes caderen per illum. Non erat ille lux et ut testimonium per eberet delumine. Erat lux vera que illuminat omnem hominem venientem in hunc mundum. In nundo eratem nundus per ipsum e factus est et nundus eum non cognavit. In propria venita sui eum non receperunt. Quod quotatem o receperunt eum deliteis potestatem e filios de fieri. His qui credunt in nomine eios, qui non exes sanguinibus, neque exa verunt ad ecarnis, neque exa verunt ad eferis ad ex deo natis sunt. Et verbum caro factum est, et abita vit in nobis. Et vidimus so gloriam eius, so gloriam quasi uni genitia patre, plenum gracia et veritat. Yes. Regina Celi, let her be. 